All right. Hello, everyone, and welcome to Pilates with Elaine, our online session for this morning. I would like to begin uh, by acknowledging the First Nations people on the original inhabitants of this country. We recognise, respect and celebrate the cultural uh, sorry, distinctions and traditions of Indigenous people and value their rich and positive contribution to society. We pay our respects to the traditional owners and custodians of the land where we work on and acknowledge all elders and warriors, past, present and emerging. I'll hand over to Elaine to get started with our session. Whenever you're ready, Elaine, take it away. No worries. Hi, everyone. Thank you for joining. Um, to begin with, um, if we're going to do this um, next few days or weeks, whenever you can, you don't have to get it now. But if you have like a band or something close by, even if it's, for example, I don't know, some leggings or pants, something stretchy, go and grab one. If you've got a little cushion, come and grab it. If you've got another jacket or something to use to prop under your neck so to make it more comfortable for you. Um, if you have hardboard floors and you've got a mat, um, and in case you're worried, like, you know, the, the bones will kind of rub it or dig into the mat, just put a, like another layer of um, like a blanket or a towel or something like that, or just double up your mat. And um, yeah, we can go. Let's, let's begin with some warm up, shall we? I hope everyone's well and being safe at home, wearing their masks when we need to. Let's get some exercise going. So we're going to stand hip width apart. All right? I'm just going to stand side profile on and we're just going to roll down. Okay, So we're going to stand up nice and straight, imagining the crown of your head. There's a little um, rope pulling you up nice and tall. We're going to roll down. So inhale through the nose, exhale through the mouth like you're breathing out through a straw. So you got to inhale. Exhale, pull that belly button into your spine. You're going to roll down your spine one vertebra at a time, nice and slow. Bend the knees if you have to or when you have to. Have your fingertips and your palms down to the ground. Now, what we're going to do, I want you to try and leave the palms down to the ground there, okay? You're going to bend the knees as much as you need to, even into a squat if you want to inhale. Two, three, four. Exhale, straighten your legs as much as you can, but try and get the palms down to the ground. Just leave it stuck there. We're going to do this for five pairs. So another four. Inhale, bend. Two, three, four. Exhale, straighten. Two, three, four. Inhale, bend. Two, three, four. Exhale, straighten. Two, three, four. Four. We're going to do that two more pairs. Inhale, bend. Exhale, straighten. Last one. Fold in half as much as you can. It's not a competition. It's just, just you working your body the way your body can. Now, stay folded in half if you can, releasing your hands or your palms from the ground, grabbing your elbows on either side, and you're just going to sway or swing from side to side. Now, it can be a very little swing. Just a very small swing, or if you want to go a little bit wider, as you swing, you're going to bend the opposite knee. Swing to the left, you bend your right knee, and swing. So you're supposed to hang in half, let everything pull you down, let gravity pull you down, let yourself float or melt down, let all the worries and all the cares and all the stresses from your lower back all just melt away or drop down with gravity side to side. Now you're just going to recenter yourself, steady yourself so you don't get dizzy. Releasing your arms. Now you're going to inhale, exhale, pull that belly button into your spine, pull your bottom underneath, tuck it in, don't stick your butt out. And you're going to roll back up, restacking the spine one vertebra at a time until you come up to a nice tall position. And then we're going to shrug the shoulders. All right, so you're going to shrug the shoulders one direction for six to 10 times and then reverse, all right? So we're gonna do that again. I'm just gonna tilt the camera down a little bit more. Let's see, all right. We're gonna do two full roll down. That was one, okay? We're gonna repeat that again. So in your own time, standing hip width apart, inhale, exhale, pulling the belly button in, tuck the bottom underneath, try not to stick the butt out more than anything. Feel like you're falling forward and then your fingertips and your palm catches you as you fall down. We're gonna bend. Inhale, should feel a little bit easier, just a touch easier, if not a lot more. Exhale, straighten, inhale, bend. 
two, three, four. Exhale, straighten, two, three, four. Inhale, bend, two, three, four. Exhale, straighten, two, three, four. I promise you, if you do this every day, even if it's just once a day, you will feel the difference. The, day, the days I actually don't do this, I feel really stiff. So Brendan, Laura, if you don't believe me, give it a go and tell me how you go. I promise you, you'll feel so much better. Feels awkward in the beginning, but you'll feel really good after a while. Breathe for every movement. Inhale and exhale for every move. If your breath is short or inhale for one move, exhale for another. Now still folding in half, grabbing the elbows. You're gonna sway from side to side. Fold in half like a rag doll. And just let all your worries and tensions float away or sink down to the ground. Recenter yourself when you're ready. Try not to get too dizzy. Releasing your elbows. You're going to inhale, exhale, tuck the bottom underneath. Restack the spine one vertebra at a time, like you're stacking blocks on top of one another. And we're going to shrug the shoulders. This is the last time. Now, next one, we're going to go on to our fours. We're going to go. On, uh, into cat and cow. We're just going to roll down and then we're going to go out into our fours, okay? So when you're ready, rolling down one vertebra at a time, and you're going to walk out, going onto your four. So your knees are hip width apart. Please don't bring the knees together. Bring it hip width apart. Hands are shoulder width apart. Uncurl the toes. Make sure it's directly underneath. The palms are directly underneath the shoulders and the knees are directly underneath your hips. So we're going to go, if you've done yoga before, we're going to go into cat, so tilt the tailbone underneath, tilt the pelvis under, round the back, curl the head underneath, into cat, or as I call angry cat, tilt the other way, into cow, only arch as much as you can, all right, inhale for one move, exhale for another move, take it nice and slow again, if your breath is short, you can inhale and exhale for one move. Inhale and exhale for another move. But if you can lengthen your breath, try and do inhale for one, exhale for another. At least five pairs of these. It's really good for articulation of the spine. Get the back moving. Everything from the tailbone flows all the way to the crown of the head and then the crown of the head flowing back to the tailbone. Everything working in unison. And when you're done, bring your big toes together. Knees can be wide or narrow, pushing down your bum into your heels and pushing down into a child's pose. Now, if you like your resting child's pose, you prefer that, you can go into resting child's pose as well. Stretching down. Taking a few breaths, inhale through the nose, exhale through the mouth. All right, we're gonna come back up to the four, the tabletop position. So making sure the knees are still hip width apart. All right, if you're a bit dizzy, take time. Knees are hip width apart, your hands are shoulder width apart, okay? Push equally through both hands and both knees. Now, the back is the top of the table. If we're putting, let's say a glass of water there, we're trying to keep that glass of water steady. You're gonna lift up your right arm and your left leg. We're gonna go into bird dog. I'm gonna move a little bit before I hit the beach houses at the back. You're gonna tap down. You're gonna lift and tap down. So I want you to have that feeling where your fingertips are reaching away from your waist and your toes are really reaching the other way. Stretch it long, pull that belly button into the spine. Try not to wobble or as I call, do the hula with your hips. So try not to do this. All right, where your hips go over. Just move that arm and that leg. The body doesn't move, just those two limbs. Up and down, lift, tap down. <sighs> doesn't matter which way you breathe, in or out for either move, as long as you breathe. Six to 10 taps, trying to keep it steady. Come back, swapping sides. For those of you who've done this quite a bit, you're going, oh, this is all right. You can alternate straight away, tap down, Lift, swap, swap the other side. Lift, tap down, lift, swap the other side. And your aim for this is to be as steady as you can. So take it easy. And if you feel you can't do a bird dog with one arm and one leg, 
just break it down to arms at one time, just the arms, try and alternate, and then just the legs, stretch that out. Try not to kick it up. I don't want you to arch your back. I want it straight, straight back, pull that belly button in, stretch the other side. Okay, lots of variations for this and try not to do hula with the hips. Only the limb is moving, the legs or the arms or both, not the hips, okay? Really bad example, this, where your hips go and do the hula. This is what I mean. <laughs> so don't try and do that, all right? Brandon, I don't know when's the last time you've done this. I hope you're not doing the hula with your hips, Brandon. All right, once you've done that, you're gonna push back down for a quick stretch, all right? Now, if you're not used to this, that's okay. Take your time. You're in your own space. Work with your body. If you feel any sort of pain or um, sharp pain, please stop. But if you feel just like a pull or sensation where your muscles are working, that's fine. But you know your body best. If you don't feel quite right, have a stop and have a stretch. All right. Now, once we've done our bird dog, whether it is with both hands and leg or just the arms separately, or just the legs, we're gonna change it up now. We're gonna to pretend to be dogs. Oh, you know, pretty much <laughs> pretend to be dogs, peeing on a fire hydrant. So you're gonna lift your knee. We're gonna start with the right leg. So front view, you're gonna lift and pee on a fire hydrant. It doesn't have to be that high. So if your legs can only lift that high, that is fine. What I don't want is to get your hips to go moving on the side like so. So the hips stay stable as though there's someone leaning against you or there's a wall there and you're lifting, lifting, pushing equally through both hands, palms down to the ground, you're gonna lift. Now, for those of you who've done my, who's done my classes before, I like to pick your magic number. So your magic number can be between six and 20, for some just six to 10. Pick your magic number and stick with that number. So you're doing a pair, so just say you're doing six pairs, just do six pairs. If you're doing eight, do eight. Feel how you're going. If you're feeling, yeah, I, can, I think I can do a bit more. Just do a little bit more. But don't push it too much. But making sure both sides are balanced, okay? Once you come back down, just stretch it down. Also showing when you lift and you drop it down, we're not actually putting the weight back down. You're lifting and it's just hovering over the mat or just grazing the mat. And the knees don't go back together, all right? They go open. They come back to hip width apart. Open, hip width apart, same as the other side. All right, lift, good. Now we've done that, if you need to stretch, go for it. Hi little one, just waving to the little kitties online. Hi Lauren, I can see you in your little one there. All right, let's kick up there. Flex the foot, so we're gonna kick with our heel. Feet are flat facing the ceiling. You're gonna lift and you're gonna kick, kick, kick the ceiling, kick. Kick. Don't kick where you're arching your back. I don't want you to do that. If you find you're bending on the opposite elbow, I'd rather you go down on that elbow, down on the left, straighten the right, and then you can kick. If that makes you stop arching, I'd rather you do that. If not, straighten both arms. Kick up. You should feel it right there in the glutes. All right, kick it up. Again, from the front view, don't kick it up where your hips are leaning onto the side. Your hips are always leaning against this imaginary wall and you're just kicking up straight. All right, swap to the other side. If you have a cramp, please stretch that cramp. And it is very normal for you to actually cramp up in Pilates because we're using all the smaller muscle groups that you don't normally use in everyday life or in your other exercise routines. So it's okay to cramp up, I still do. So it's normal. All right. Have a stretch, Ooh, that should feel a bit warm in the glute area. I don't know about you, Brendan, but I'm, I'm tired already. <laughs> All right, we're gonna sit down, okay? So for those of you at home who have um, like a resistance band or a TheraBand or even a pair of leggings, or like, for example, I have a, a cardigan here, not perfect, anything here to hold onto it and a little bit stretchy, grab onto that, okay? What I like you to do is just to put in front. And again, if you don't have anything, that is fine. For those who have, I just want you to put it right in front of you, hip, uh, shoulder width apart, and you're just gonna roll down. So you're standing up, you're sitting up straight here with your back straight. Your knees and your feet are hip width apart. 
and you're just going to curl down. You're going to C curl. So imagine like you're being punched in the gut and you're kicking, your, someone's punching in the gut and you're pulling the belly button down into your spine. Or another way to imagine it is if I've got a little string and I make a little knot and I thread it through my belly button and it goes out through my spine. So what I want to do is I pull it in. So it goes down that way. That's what I want you to imagine. Okay, you're going to pull that belly button into your spine and also zip up your one and two while breathing, not holding your breath. For those of you who don't know what your one and twos are, it's pretty much when you go to the toilet, your pelvic floor muscles that controls that urge to actually go on the spot. The cubicles are awful and you just need to hold on to it. Hold on so you don't pee your pants pretty much. <laughs> Turn those muscles on. So your shoulders roll back and down. You're gonna inhale, exhale, curl down, hold it. Shoulders away from the earlobes, hold it down. Inhale, exhale, curl it down again. Inhale, exhale, curl it down again. Come back up, it's gonna be a lot harder coming back up. Inhale, exhale, coming up. Inhale, exhale, coming up. And restacking your spine. Now, if you're going down in two steps, three steps, four steps, Try and do the same coming back up. For those of you who go, I cannot do that. What is Elaine doing? That's ridiculous. That's okay. Use your hands. Go underneath your thighs, all right? Just underneath the knee pit. Open up like you're having chicken wings, all right? Chicken wings are up, but shoulders are down. You're gonna hold on for dear life. Curling down, hold. Inhale, exhale, curling down. You're gonna hold. Inhale, exhale, holding down. So this keeps you from falling onto your back. Your arms are straight. Now you're going, oh dear, how am I going to come back up? Pull yourself up using your core. If you can't, and if you're just starting out, that's what the hands are for. Use your hands to pull yourself up. No shame in using that. You got to start somewhere, okay? This is what you got to practice. You got to start somewhere, baby steps, so you get stronger and stronger. Healthy body, healthy mind. You're going to do six to 10 pairs of this, okay? Inhale, exhale, inhale, exhale, taking your time. And again, if you're stuck, don't feel bad to start again to pull yourself up. That's okay, that's where we are. So with the band, without the band, you can do anyways, curling down. If you don't have a band, you don't wanna use a band, when you get a bit stronger, you can extend down, curling down. You might not go as low, and then you're gonna come back up trying to have your feet planted into the ground, okay. Once you've done that, we're gonna roll all the way back down, lying onto your back. So come down, 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 rolling onto your back, get yourself comfortable. You are going to bring your heels in a little bit. So your feet and your knees are hip width apart. Your hands, as a guy, reach your fingertips towards the back of your heels. I want you to be able to flatten just to barely touch your heels. That's how far it is. So I don't want your feet too far away where it's long. So kind of just roughly where they are here. Hands can be down, pushing into the mat. We're gonna go hip lifts, lifts. The hip goes straight up towards the ceiling. Knees pushing directly away from your waist. Pull that belly button in, try and lower the chest. Don't pop the chest up and try not to arch. So lower back is glued down. Nothing can go under my lower black back. If you're wondering how does that work? So this is my normal arch. I'm gonna tilt my pelvis down like so, or tilt my pelvis up rather, posterior tilt, so that lower back imprints into the back of the mat. So you're gonna do hip lifts. Let's do six to 10, all right, when you're ready. Inhale, exhale, lift, and tap down and lift again. Try not to put the whole weight down, just barely tap down and lift again. Squeeze those butt cheeks of yours. Use your hands, use your arms to push into the ground, to lift your hips, whatever feels good. For those of you who want a little bit more, hands can go up towards the ceiling. And as you lift, the fingertips just reaching up towards the ceiling. Next one, if you wanna do, if you wanna go back up, again to the next step, you can lift up with the arms going past your head. Different stages, okay? So stage one, just focus on hip lifts. Once you are done, just say you've done six to 10, you're gonna hold it at the top. Come back up if you've already come down. If your magic number is six, I want you to give me six little pulses. If your magic number is 10, give me 10 little pulses. And then come down, bring your knees into your chest, 
stretch it out, go side to side. And that's your first set. And we're gonna do two sets or so another set. So if you've done six, go six again or add two more into eight. If you've done 10, let's see if you can go 12, but try not to go more than 20, okay? okay. So whichever way, hands down, fingertips up, whichever you prefer, lift and lower, lift, tap down and lift again. So fingertips up, you're gonna lift and lift. Or reach out past your ears, past your hips. Don't forget the pulses at the end. So just say I've done 10, I've lost count. I never remember how many. I'm gonna do 10 little pulses. Eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. Oh, come down. Bring your knees into your chest. Whew. Have a stretch. That should feel a little bit if you haven't worked in a while. Like me, I had a day off yesterday, so I didn't really work out. Actually, no, I didn't have a day off. I worked in the evening. That's all right. All right. Lying down on your back. Brendan, I hope you're doing this, okay? I hope you're not just watching eating chips, okay? <laughs> Good job, Brendan. Laura, I hope you're working too. Bring one knee up to 90 degrees or tabletop. So you've got that right angle, that hinge, that right angle. Um, um, what do you call it? that right angle pretty much. That's your table. Again, you put a glass of water there. That should move. So don't drop the, he uh, the heels down. Don't lift the heels up. Lift it there. Now, you're going to bring the other one as well to 90-90. So not lower, not higher. Same. So it looks like you've got one leg. They're still hip width apart. And the knees and the feet are hip width apart. Lower back imprinted down. So there's no arching. So if you have an arch, tilt your pelvis down so you nothing can crawl underneath no little mouse no little ladybugs can crawl in from here two stages so either with your head down you're just going to tap one toe down and lift <sighs> inhale down exhale up <sighs> imprint that lower back if that's too easy try not to move the other leg so looking at yourself in your camera in your video in your frame and making sure as you drop one down, it's literally you pushing that leg down. So that leg, that heel doesn't just drop down like so, not like this, okay? That stays, there's no hinge, and you're literally pushing that whole leg down and coming back up. Pushing the other leg down and coming back up. Now, for those of you who've done this, oh, I've got a cramp now. Oh, see, even I get cramps. You're gonna curl the head and shoulders up if you wanna to do a little bit more. And you do the same work, the same movement, but with your head and shoulders curled up. <sighs> inhale down, exhale up. <sighs> inhale down, exhale up. Again, use your numbers, your magic number, whether it be six pairs, eight pairs, seven pairs, 10 pairs, 12 pairs. Try and go up to maybe 15 max. If you feel, if you've done it before, you can go easily up to 20. If you haven't really done this before, I wouldn't recommend you go more than 10. <sighs> Make sure if you start it with your left leg, you finish with your right leg and vice versa. Point the toes and then bring the knees into your chest and roll side to side. Now I'm gonna let you do a little stretch. It's an exercise slash stretch. Arms to a T by your side. You're gonna bring your knees one up to 90 again, the other one up to 90. Now you're gonna bring the heels and the feet together. You're gonna to glue them together. Shoulders glued down. To the mat don't lift the shoulders looking straight up to the center of the ceiling you're going to bring both knees to the left your opposite shoulder your right shoulder should be glued down bring it back to the center <sighs> inhale to the right left shoulder is down exhale <sighs> bring both knees to the center back to the center inhale to the other side again this is your second one back to the center <sighs> Inhale to the right, exhale to the center. Now you could easily just go, yep, this is really easy. I'm just moving, I'm gluing the shoulders down. But really what I want you to think of when you're going to one side, I want the opposite rib cage to pull your legs back to the center. So you're not really using your legs, you're using your core. As you come to this side, you're pulling the right rib cage down to move it. So this is just part of that body 
all right? It's not moving separately. So everything works in unison. Pull that down, suck that belly button in, activate your core, turn it on. Let's do six to 10 pairs. You don't have to go as low. If you can't go as low, don't worry about it. If that's all you can do, that's fine. Inhale to the side, exhale. Inhale, exhale. Opposite shoulders or both shoulders should always be down. Now, just stretch out long for me. Ooh, that should feel nice. Oh, if you finish, just stretch out nice and long for me. I'm going to let you do another one lying down, so it makes it a little bit easier. You're going to bend one knee. I'm going to bend one knee up so that my right knee is pointing up towards the ceiling. I'm going to flatten that lower back of mine down into the ground. So not arching. So that's an arch. Moving the pelvis. So you're tilting in posterior tilt and that's flat down. So nothing can crawl underneath. This leg, your left leg, if you are using your left leg, go straight, lifting off the ground, point the toes. I want you to inhale up towards the ceiling. Exhale down, inhale up, anchor the belly button down to your spine, exhale down, inhale up, exhale down. As you exhale down, I want you to think of lengthening your body horizontally. Inhale up, every time your belly is anchoring down to the mat, it doesn't pop up, you never arch your back. Everything is pushing down to the ground and you're lengthening your body long. Inhale up. Exhale down. If you prefer, you can point the toes and flex the heel down. It doesn't really matter. It's a little bit harder, but either or, I just want you to get that lengthening movement, that lengthening feeling and anchoring. If you've got a toddler or a pet, put them on your belly or put a, a kettle ball or some sort of weights on your belly that something's heavy and just put it on your belly and make sure that's staying down. Inhale, exhale down. The other knee, try not to open it sideways. Keep pushing it away from your waist. So it's staying in one position and it barely moves. Inhale, exhale. Inhale, exhale. Once you've done your magic number, swap the other side. Make sure it's equal. If you've done eight, make sure you do eight on the other side. Inhale, exhale. Keep anchoring your lower, your belly button into your spine, down into the mat. Keep anchoring down, lengthen your body. So the crown of your head, as though someone's stretching your neck and the crown of the head away from your waist and someone's stretching your leg, or your toes out of that hip socket. Inhale. Think of stretching yourself taller or longer, making yourself that two inches taller. Oh, I've got a cramp already, see? I probably didn't eat enough bananas. Ah. Inhale. Exhale. Inhale, exhale, good. Oh, once you're done, bring it in. If you need to stretch long, stretch it long. If you need to bring your knees in, bring your knees in. Do whatever makes you happy. Roll around, or oh, this is one happy baby. You like a happy baby stretch in yoga? Please feel free to do it. Just stretch what you may to make yourself feel better. I'll give you another one. It's also part of the exercise. Bringing the knees in, hugging the shins in. You're just going to rock yourself back and forth, curling. So this is rolling like a ball prep, just rocking and rolling the back. So it's really nice massage, just back and forth a few times. Make sure your shoulders are away from your earlobes, rocking back and forth. And then give yourself a big rock up and just sitting up. Swing yourself all the way up to the top. That's it. Now, that was rolling like a ball prep. Now we're going to actually do rolling like a ball. I'm going to give you a few variations. So in beginner variation, you're going to hold your shin, bring the legs in, bring the feet in, the heels in. You're going to, instead of a straight back, you're going to start curling. So remember like you've been punched in the guts. Curl in, hip towards your knees. You're going to keep a nice circular or C curve in the back. So you're going to roll back and come back up. All right, that's the point of it. So you roll back. Come back up. If your feet has to go down, that's fine. Reset by lifting it up. If you're just beginning and you go, I can't get back up, that's fine. Roll back, lift, move your legs, swing your legs up and swing your legs back over. Right? Use your leg as that momentum to swing yourself back up. If you're a little bit more um, advanced or a little bit more intermediate level or high level, you're going to keep 
your knees in, you're gonna keep the distance of the heels towards your bum roughly the same. Roll back, come up, hold. Roll back, come up, hold. So if you're the higher level, you hold. If not, you set it down and you come back up. I'm gonna show you another, um, another level. As you lift, you're gonna roll back. You're gonna come up. You're gonna extend one leg long, bring it in. Extend the other leg long, bring it in. Go again. Roll back, come up. Extend one long, bring it in. Extend the other one long, bring it in. All right, so that's your three stages. Pick and choose, have a play and see which one feels better for you. All right, once you're done, have a quick stretch. We're gonna go on to our sides and then we're gonna do some side work there. All right, so when you're finished, have a stretch. We're gonna go on to our side. I'm just gonna show you the right alignment um, for lying onto your side. So if you've got your mat here, it's a rectangle. I want you to lean or make sure everything's in alignment with the back of the mat, the back line of the mat, okay? So I want you to lie down. So either having your arms nice and long, fingertips away from the waist, resting your head down onto um, your arm. I want you to lift that lower waist so there's always a gap underneath, okay? So you have that, what I call that little bridge where that little queen ladybug or little mouse can crawl in and under at any time. If you drop it and let your guts just fall out pretty much, if you don't lift it, you're not activating your core, all right? So I want you to pull that belly button in, literally by pulling that belly button in and lifting, you're already doing most of the work. You're gonna fall your knees, so bend at the knees. Your heels are together. Heels are in line with your bum, in line with your shoulders at the back of the mat. Now, for whatever reason, if you are lying down like so, you go, my neck is really uncomfortable, have a pillow or um, some blankets or a little soft ball or cushion, whatever you can find and lift it there, put it there so you can lift your head up a little bit. But what I don't ever want you to do is to do this. I don't want you to have the weight of your head in the palm of your hand. Because when you do this, you forget about that. And look, nobody or nothing can crawl underneath there. I rather you bend that arm. That's not holding on it. That's supporting my head. And I'm lying there so my neck is long. And, but I'm still, all, I'm still lifting and activating my core. Okay, either or. Like so, with something in the middle. Or prop it up halfway. But don't put your weight in your hip, in your hands. All right. I'm just gonna support it halfway. Bring the knees together, feet together. We're gonna go into some open and close clamps, but we're gonna turn it up a notch. I want you to lift the heels off the mat. We're gonna go open and close clamps with the heels off, okay? We're gonna do it for 10. So let's say, like again, if I said 10, you can do six. If you're done with six, your magic number is eight, you can do up to eight. I want you to open as though someone's pushing that leg close as you push it open. Imagine that resistance. When you're closing, there's something between your legs and you're squishing it and crushing it between your legs. I want you to feel that resistance. So open and close. It's not just gonna be, yep, yep, yep. <laughs> open and close steps, not as easy. All right, have your hands in front of your belly. Lift that lower waist or next level up, you can have your hands on top of your, on your waist, but making sure that you're not rolling forwards or rolling backwards. Now, once you've done enough of that, so just say you've done up to eight. I want you to change it up. The heels are still lifted. I want you to add a variation to a tweak. You're gonna open the clam. You're gonna straighten that leg, point the toes. The other leg is still lifted. You're gonna bend it back and close. Open, straighten, bend it back and close. Open, straighten, bend it back and close. So whatever number you did before, your magic number, you do the same, okay? Lift that lower waist, pull that belly button in, zip up your one and two, and never hold your breath. Point the toes, extend it long. It's an extension of your leg. <sighs> breathe. It's a bit harder for me to breathe because I've got to talk at the same time. Once you're done, oh, bring it down. Massage it if you need to. Now, keep the bottom leg bent. Extend the other leg long, making sure it's parallel, it's not dropped and it's long parallel horizontal to the ground. Okay, hands can be in front for more balance or on your hips. We're gonna kick up. 
and down, all right? We're gonna kick up for 10, so we go 10, nine, again, you can do less, seven, six, five, point the toes, stretch it away from you, four, three, two, one. Hold it there, parallel to the ground. Keep pointing your toes as though someone's pulling that leg out of the hip socket. And you're gonna hold it for a count of five, four, three, two, one. Hold it there. Now what I want you to do is I want you to do circles with your legs. So circle forwards, 10 little circles, 10, nine, eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. Hold it for five. Keep stretching out for three, two, and one. Now we're going to re reverse the circle. So you went forward, circle it backwards. 10, nine, eight, seven, six, point, four. Oh, no, lost count. Three, I think. Let's say two. I might go over, I might go under. You count. I lose count. And hold it. All for five. Hold it. Come on. Four. Whew. Three, two, one. Oh, now you can drop it. Now it's going to be pretty sore there. So you can massage it as you want to or as you may. It's pretty sore for me. Oh, all right. I'm going to push yourself up. We are going to go onto your elbows. Now we've only done one side. We haven't quite finished. This is the last one. And then we'll turn to the other side. So have a little water break or something or wipe the sweat from your brow. I think I need to turn the fan out higher. Brendan's a bit getting warm in here. <laughs> Don't know about you. All right, hip lifts. I've got three um, variations. So I want you to do three sets. And please don't feel bad if you can't do three sets. If one is all you can do, that is fine. You are working for you, not for anyone else, okay? You're improving your body. You're competing against yourself and that's it. Have the other foot down into the ground, push it in, all right? Lift that lower waist, okay? If you can draw, if I can draw, <laughs> a perfect triangle with a nice right angle underneath. Hands towards the ceiling, fingertips reaching up towards the ceiling. Your hips, you're going to lift it up. So you're going to go lift, okay? You're going to go six to 10. Pick your number, all right? I'm just going to do six because I'm going to show you the other two sets. Now, whatever set you can't do, whatever variation you, variation, sorry, you can't do, come back down to the one before. All right, now I'm done with that one. Good. Bring both knees, bend it together, glue it together. You're going to lift with both knees in the same position, lift. Now, if this one you go, not can't do that, go back to the one before, all right? That's what I mean. So continue with this, go up to six or 10, whatever your magic number is. Once you've done that, next stage, extend it long, leave it hovering over the ground and lift. And if you go, oh my goodness, Elaine, I can't do that, bend it back. And if you go, no, nah, I still can't do that, put it back down, all right? Or if you say, you look, I'm just cooked, I'm done. Have a stretch, all right? When you're finished, just finish it off, all right? And then come down. Now, stretch your glutes, stretch your legs. Go into pigeon pose. This is your stretch time for you to turn over to the other side. So stretch your glutes in pigeon pose. If you want to stretch, I don't know what this stretch is called. You can do this one. Or pretzel pose where you're lying down, you're pulling in and you're stretching the glutes on the other side. Or my favorite, for those of you who done my classes, I like to do my standing pretzel because I got really tight um, sciatic pain then. This is the only one that gets to that muscle group. Oof. All right, once you stretch it out, have a bit of water if you need to. We're gonna go onto the other side. You ready, Brendan? You ready, Laura? Let's go. Oh, let's go into clams, I think. That's what we did before. So remember, in line with the back of your mat, feet together, heels together, in line with the bum, in line with the back of the shoulders, lift that lower waist. Hands can be long or supported or with something else to support. I don't have a pillow, I just have a cardigan. So forget that. So do whatever makes you comfortable. Lift that lower waist, all right? We're gonna go open and close clamps with resistance. Imagine someone pushing your thighs down as you open and someone keeping your thighs open as you close down, all right? Using that resistance, open and close. Hands can be in front for more balance, a little bit more challenge. You put your hands on your hips, but make sure you're not rolling back and forth, okay? Your hips are stacked on top of the other and you've got a little gap underneath your lower waist. Once you've done that, we're gonna keep the feet that the way it is. Open, close clams, extend the leg, point the toes, bend it back, close, open, bend it back, 
close, open, point the toes, feel the cramp coming, I do. Whew. Open, extend it, pick your magic number. If you've done six on the other side, keep to the same number on this side. Try whatever you do, don't do more on your dominant side. If anything else, I'd rather you do more on your less dominant side. So most people are right-handers. I'd rather you do more on the left side than the right. If not, if you lost count, that's okay, but don't do more on your dominant side. We already know that your dominant side is stronger. All right. Whew. All right, once we've done that, we're gonna extend that leg long. We're gonna kick up for 10 or whatever your magic number is. Remember that. So we're gonna kick 10, nine, eight, seven, six. Lift that lower waist, four, three, two, one. Hold it long, point the toes. Imagine someone's pulling your hip out, your leg out of the hip socket. Hold it for three, two, one. Circle forward for 10, nine or less, depending whatever your magic number is. Seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. Hold it for a count of five. Pull that belly button in. Lift that lower waist, making sure you're zipping up your one and your two. All right, now reverse the other way. Circle, reverse. Seven, whew, six, five, four, three, two, and one. Stay with me. Hold it there for another five. I know it's sore. I'm not so am I. I'm burning up here. Two, one. Oh, drop it down. Oh, massage it. All right. Now you're ready. Let's do the hip lifts. Remember the three sets of hip lifts. Choose your favorite. Choose what you can do. So on your elbow, making sure your elbow is directly underneath your shoulders. Try not to get it out like so or underneath where your elbow is sticking out or your shoulder sticking out, okay? Have the bottom knee bent, top leg pushing down into the ground. Fingertips towards the ceiling. The other hands can be here. We're gonna lift. I'm gonna do six, five, four, three, two, one. Look up, it, turns, it helps you lift up. Bend the knee back. And then we're going to go the next set. Six, five, four, three, two, one. Remember, if it's too hard, go back to the one before. Last one, you're going to lift. Five, four, three, two, one. And drop it down. Oh, all right. Stretch the other side out. You are done for your side work. Good job. Well done. Whew. that's a workout. I don't know about you, I'm almost sweating in here. Whew. All right, I'm gonna do my pretzel pose, a standing pretzel pose, my favorite. Oof, if I can't get any balance. Ah, there we go. All right, excuse me, I'm gonna have a sip of water. I'm doing all this talking. All righty, let's go on to our belly, shall we? We're gonna go onto our belly buttons, all right? Lying on our tummies, lying down, legs are hip width apart. Now with your belly, I want you to imagine underneath your belly button, between your belly button literally and the mat, that's a little blueberry. And you've got a very light colored top, just say a white shirt, a white top. And if you squeeze, if you don't lift that belly button off the mat, you're gonna squish that blueberry into the mat, into your shirt, and you've got blueberry jam, so a squish blueberry on your shirt. And you don't want that because it's gonna stain and it's gonna stay there forever. So as you're lying down, I want you to actively pull that belly button up towards the spine, towards the ceiling, okay? Lift it up. So if you can, there'll be a space underneath there. Have your hands underneath the shoulders. So from the front view, ignore my legs, you're bending underneath like this. Okay, I don't want your elbows or your chicken wings to come out. I want it tucked in all the way, all right? All the way. I want you to work the back of your muscles, the back of your arm muscles, your triceps. So I have it down. Legs are hit with the part, pushing that down into the ground. You're gonna lift the top half into mini cobra. Stretch the crown of your head away from your waist. Lift, coming down, coming down is the hard part. Lift up, coming down. You can count it in segments. So three, two, one or you don't have to be that harsh. You can just lift and come down slowly, but elbows tuck in. If you're doing a full cobra, go a full cobra, go up to your hips, lift the hips up, extend the leg, extend the arms. And if you're doing a full cobra with the extension, go for it as well, coming down, pulling the elbows tight, nice and slow. 
six to ten. Coming up is not the problem, it's coming down. Elbows are tucked in, shoulders away from the earlobe. Once you've done six to ten, push back into child's pose. Big toes together, knees apart or knees narrow or resting child's pose. Have a quick stretch. And then coming back onto your belly. Don't forget that, that belly button is lifted off the mat. This time, you're going to have one hand on top of the other, glued to your forehead. Doesn't leave, all right? Doesn't leave your forehead. Your forehead stays glued down. You're gonna move the bottom legs, the top bottom half. Lift both legs off. Tap it down, lift again. Keep thinking that someone's pulling your legs away from your waist. Lift and lower, lift and lower for six to 10. For those of you who've done this before, and go, I'm a bit bored with this variation. Lift up, clap your feet three times. Come down, lift up. Clap your feet three times again. Come down, lift up. Clap it three more times. Come down, lift up. Drop your right leg. Drop your left. Lift your left. Lift your right. Drop your left. Drop your right. Lift your right. Lift your left. And then tap down again and you can clap. And then when you're done, six to 10 of those, whichever variation you would like, go back into the stretch. Whew. All right, now we've done the top half and the bottom half. I want you to combine. So if you find um, lifting the top half and the bottom half together it hurts and you're not quite strong in your lower back, keep continuing just doing just the top half and just the bottom half separately. All right, otherwise we'll combine it. Hands are still underneath one another, glued to the forehead and doesn't move from the forehead until I tell you to, okay? So you're gonna lie down. You're gonna lift both. Top and bottom, both stretching away from you. Don't think of arching. I'd rather you think like you're uh, the rope in tug of war and you've been pulling apart. Tap down, lift up. Don't forget your belly button. You've got to lift it off that mat. Don't squash that blueberry. Lift and lower. Lift and lower. Lift and lower for six to 10. Lift and lower. Breathe at the same time. Glue the back of your hands to your forehead. Stretch long, crown of your head going the opposite direction to where your toes are stretching towards. Once you've done six to 10 of that, you're gonna push back, have a quick stretch. Whew. All right, and what we're gonna do next, we are going to go a quick little stretch before I get you to do a nice quick cardio bit at the end. So if you can, I want you to put both feet together so we're toning down and then we're going to ramp it up a bit more, okay? Feet together, what I call butterfly, uh, your butterfly wings, so you're going to flap your butterfly wings. Soles of your feet together, hold it. We're just going to flap the knees, all right? Up and down. And the point of this is you're trying to push the knees down as much as you can. So first, we're going to get some movement in, get some warmth. Two ways to do this. First one, hold it in, curl forward, using your elbows to push the knees down to the ground. That's one. Two, the one I prefer that works better for me, might not be yours, not your cup of tea, hands behind pushing the back straight and using gravity to push the, the knees down, okay? So either like, so keeping the soles of the feet together and pushing it down or holding the feet and pushing down using the strength of your elbows and your weight. Do this three times, three sets, all right? We're gonna try and get a little bit lower every time. And don't worry if you can't. This took me years to do, all right? And I'm not the most flexible person. Um, and what you see now, the flexibility I've gained is from years of practicing and not giving up. And some days when I don't, don't do my stretches, I'm as stiff as anything. So don't, um, don't regret the power of stretching. It really helps. The days I don't stretch, I feel like an old woman. All right, oh, pushing down. One more set, last one promise and then we're going to get you to do something else all right just a quick stretch just to stretch it out all right how are we going for time there brendan all right we're going to stand up good all right we're going to stand up now if you can if you've got floorboards that's perfect or um anything even if it's carpet it's fine i've got these things called sliders you don't have to have them even if you have um hotel slippers socks I don't have any socks here, but you have something so socks. You just need something slippery, okay? 
So what I want you to do, I'm just going to show you with the sliders, with or without. I want you to bend, okay? So you bend your squatting like that. Pull the belly button in, okay? You're going to hold wherever you can. You can hold it like so. You can hold like that, whatever is comfortable. You can even put your hands on your hips. I like to bring it forward. We're going to straighten that leg. Bring it in, bring it out. In and out for 10, all right? Eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. Now, without standing up, let's go the other side. Okay, 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. All right, I'm going to turn to the side. Now we're going to do a back split kind of scooter, okay? We're going to go back like so. So we go 10, 9, 8. Pull that belly button in, strong back. Try not to round the back, not to arch the back. Straight, 6, Five, four, three, two, one. I'm gonna turn the other side so you can see. Swap to the other side. Try not to stand up. Ten, nine, eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. Oh, done. All right. We're gonna come back down. We're gonna finish off with some stretching. I'm gonna bring my mat back out, and we're gonna sit on our bottoms. You're going yay. I'm sitting on my bottom, yay. We're gonna do some stretches, all right? So you're gonna sit like me. You're gonna mirror my seat. We're gonna bring out our inner mermaid, inner mer person around, okay? So bend the left knee, bend the right knee like so. Left arm down here. Couple ways to do this. So the full version is a hip thrust where you're lifting your hip. If you go, nah, not possible. Pat that hand down, just stretch or on your elbows and stretch. So regardless, whichever way you do, I want you to windmill the arm around, grab your left knee, pull, and stretch your left arm to the right. <sighs> That's one, okay? Again, we're gonna do four pairs of this. Stretch wherever you want, windmill it back. That's a bit complex, but if you mirror me, you won't, you won't get it wrong, okay? I'm doing my hands down without the hip lift. This is how it looked like. Or if I'm doing with the elbows down without the hip lift, this is how it's going to look like. Oh, my TV is going to turn off. Hang on. Don't turn off on me. Hang on. All right. Let's swing to the other side. Make sure you've done three to four, okay? And let's do the other side. So bend the opposite side. Your right arm should be down. Lift, stretch. Windmill it around, grabbing your right knee, stretching to the left. Again, if you don't want to bend or hip lift, go to your elbow. Windmill the arm around, grabbing that knee. Pull, anchoring your hips down. Or this way, if you want. Even if you're on your elbows and you want to do a slight modification, go for it. Try and be a bit creative, but really, we're just stretching here. All right? Go for where you can. And if you've done four on the other side, make sure you do four on this side. Oh, and how are we going there, Brendan? Shall we stop or should we do some more? Good. All right, well, that's my stretch. I'm gonna give you an option if you want. So Brendan, you tell me now, shall I give you another little option or, or yes, we got another little option? All right. For those of you who just wanna pump it up just a little bit, all right? Don't have to feel pressured. Do it if you can. If you can't, just do it and have a laugh. Come down onto your hands and your knees, all right? Curl the toes underneath. What I want you to do, I want you to do a knee hover. You're gonna lift the knees off the mat. If that's all you can do, that's all I want you to do, hold it. So don't arch your back and don't round your back. Lift it, the knees are just slightly hovering over the mat. For those of you who can do more, if not, you can come down, uncurl the toes and go into a stretch back to child's pose. For those of you who can, knee hover. And if you can, you're going to extend one leg long. You're going to extend the other leg long into a plank. Bring the feet together. Push equally through both heels as though they're one unit. Push the heels away, directly away from the crown of your head. Pull that belly button in. Come back into the knee hover. Hold it. Come back down. Knees down gently. Toes together. Knees apart. Push back. And then I'm going to do one more. Again, whichever you can't do, go back to the one before. I'm just gonna amp it up every time, or right? I'm just gonna add on. Knee hover, 
straight on one leg, pushing out through the heel, straight on the other leg, pushing out through the heel. Bring both heels together, Pilates plank, really strong. Push, lift the belly, don't drop the belly down. Don't lift, I'm not asking you to do downward dog. Lift, okay? Now, when you're ready, go back to a wider stance, hip width apart. Lift one foot up, point the toes. Flex it back, down. Lift the other leg up, point the toes. Flex it back, down. Bring the heels together, push into a plank. Come back into the knee hover, down, gently goes the knees, uncurl the toes, and you're done into child's pose. <sighs> That's just strong ending. So I'm done, Brandon. So over to you and Laura. <sighs> Hi, Elaine. I'm Alice. I'm with uh, RecLink Geelong. Nice to meet you. Hi, Alice. I just wanted to say thank you so much for today's class. No um, I actually jumped on and had a go. I haven't done Pilates in a long time, but yeah, that was amazing. So thank oh, you excellent. so much. I'm glad you enjoyed it. <laughs> yeah, so good. Um, and to let everyone know, we've got Zumba at 4pm today as well. And Brendan's just going to share the flyer with you all. So we've got something different every day. Um, yeah, thanks again, Elaine. That was awesome. Yeah, very welcome. <laughs> thanks. I hope I got you guys working. I'm working a sweat up here, but yeah. <laughs> that was a lot harder than um, I anticipated, but we needed it. It was good. So thank you so much. Um, and no thank you, Alice, as well, for letting us know about the session this afternoon. I did want to quickly jump on and let everyone know before you all leave that we do have two sessions tomorrow. Um, the first one at 11.30 tomorrow is going to be Nutrition with Lou. And what that's going to be about is just eating in lockdown and um, Lou is a dietitian and she's going to give us some tips and tricks on how to make sure that we're in tune with our body and reducing that non-hungry eating, which can happen a little easier when we're at home all the time. So that's sure to be a really great session. The Zoom link is the same. So you're welcome to use um, the same link that you used to jump on today. And then at 4 p.m. tomorrow, we also have chair yoga. So that's set to be a great session as well. So we hope you can all make it. If you've got any questions, feel free to let Brendan or myself know before you jump 